and we are live you guys know what it is i got a special guest in the building like dj envy says on the breakfast club yeah <laughs> we got joe <laughs> joey chin is joseph chin but he said we can call him joey he told us that in the email so I, we can we can call him joey he uh was on our podcast previously i don't know if you guys remember he came and did a podcast and we was in the studio we had a great conversation I actually had some really dope uh clips that we were able to cut up from that podcast because it was such a good conversation and post on Instagram. And that was pretty cool. Thank you. Uh, but before we get into it, of course, we got a shout out to the sponsors because you know what it is. And that's period. It uh, Drum Tracks app. Uh, you guys can download it. Find it in the uh, Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Download the app for free. You can create a free account. You can stream over 150 drumless play along tracks for free. Um, however, if you guys would like to dig deep into some of the drum education we got on there, some of the lessons, the practice routines, the uh, the uh, shed camp, which is amazing. A lot of people are loving that with Eric Moore on there. You can come rock with us and vibe with us on that. So with that being said, let's get into it. Oh, looks like we got a guest in here. We got Sam Campbell in the building. <clears throat> Oh, I got to let you guys know, because, of course, you don't see Sticks here. He is yeah. he was not able to make it today uh, in the podcast. He had a situation he had to be at that came up, and so we will catch yeah. him on the next one. But still, we got I, th I feel like we got a dope replacement for today. Well, he was going to be our guest anyway, but yeah. if Sticks couldn't make it, I was like, well, I don't need Sticks to talk to Joey. We good. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> in fact, it's better that he's not here. Assuming... <laughs> now that's going on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Assuming whatever is keeping him from this is, you know, just like a scheduling conflict and nothing serious like that. Yeah, no, it's not nothing serious. It's just a okay. scheduling okay, conflict. Good. Something happened yeah. and he's like, okay. I was like, nah, it's all good. I, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll write the podcast. So that's that's what that is. Uh, so we got, oh, we got. Some 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 people I haven't seen in the podcast before. Ashley Acoustics, hey, what's up? Shout out to you. Um, so yeah, this podcast is gonna be pretty laid back, no specific topic, man. Me and Joey, we just kind of gonna kind of shoot the breeze. We are gonna hop in and see what you guys are saying in the comments, man. But uh, let's get started. So Joey, man, how you been? I'm good. Um, I have pretty much. I think I came and spoke to you guys first in uh, in September. Yeah. I think it was because it it was hot the last time I talked to you. Yeah. Um, and there was and there was fires everywhere. Right. Uh, but about that time, I kind of uh, uh, I started I, I took this strange journey with doubles and kind of put uh, put my original understanding of what doubles are okay. kind of on the back burner and then really tried to instead of because I, I, I think before my understanding of like a drum concept was like a ladder. Right. It goes up okay. and you go up the ladder one rung at a time. OK. And when I so so prior to this little journey that I've taken with doubles, my understanding was like, oh, okay, I'll start with doubles and then I'll crank up the the, uh, the metronome and then get better at doubles by playing them faster and faster and faster. Because okay. again, it, that was my understanding before, mm -hmm. but uh, after kind of working them for a while, I've, I've, under, I've come to understand that it's that the learning of any concept in, in drums is like a tree mm. that spreads out and breaks off of itself, right? Okay, So. Yeah, so I learned through my practicing that there's there's two ways that I can that I need to practice. Me personally, I'm not the example of what anybody should do. I'm not fit to teach anybody anything. Mm -hmm. I'm a student. I'm learning. Um, so with doubles, on the one side, there is just learn to play them better than you can play them. Okay. And I did that by doing weird workouts that I found on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. My favorite one was by Rob B. Down Brown. Okay. Uh, and he does one that is, uh, I think it is at 120 beats per minute played as eighth notes. Mm. Um, and it's for 20 minutes straight, which comes out to 2,400 doubles per hand. So just about, five, right, just about five, right. Just about 5,000 doubles. Wow. You know, um, and then the, uh, so the other avenue of practicing with them was learning how to expand them into other things. And that I kind of, uh, I had to get some help with from, you know, the drum teacher that I had at the time. Um, and from there I, I learned, um, I already knew about inversions, but I kind right. of learned how to in incorporate them a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Uh, so taking that, you know, just wanting to strengthen doubles has yeah. provided better framing for all of the things that I play. Doesn't it do I that though? It does. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm I, sorry. I'm I went in, I went, you. yeah, 
I went into doubles thinking that I was going to get better at doubles. Right. And sticking with doubles has made me better at everything. <laughs> Absol- wow. Absolutely everything. So uh, how long has this? So you've been doing this since September? Uh, about about October was when I really decided that I was going to I was going to go in on doubles. So this is a good nine months now close to it yeah i i mean i have my days where i just put on the radio and i jam to that but uh yeah i mean as far as my practicing has gone it has it has started with strengthening my doubles just at face value right right left left yeah. actually that's a that's a good point i should circle back that was the reason that i decided to choose doubles because uh I think that because we're all YouTube generation, yeah. it's really easy to, to hop on the internet and look up something that's kick left, right, kick left, right, kick left, right, left, kick, right, left, kick, right, left, kick, mm-hmm. and learn that piece as face value, right? right. Um, and we all know that patterns are a part of what we do, mm-hmm. but we when, that's what we think of when we think of a pattern. So I was Correct. like, okay, well, I'm going to pick a pattern and I'm going to drill it down to everything that I can possibly squeeze out of this pattern. Okay. And then when I really thought about it, I was like, okay, the pattern that I'm going to do might as well be right, right, left, left, or an inversion of that. Um, mm-hmm. So I decided to pick a simple pattern to work with, which turned out to be doubles. Okay. Um, and it has just changed everything. I'm 20, I'm going on like 22 years playing drums. And because of the work that I've done in the last nine months, I feel like I'm just starting to barely scratch at the bottom levels of what would be <laughs> an intermediate drum. You, you know, know what what's I mean? crazy? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I was watching, um, who was it that said this? Because I watch a lot of stuff. I consume like a lot of audio books and a lot of content from people yeah. who I think have good thoughts. And somebody said it. They Somebody asked them, or somebody said, oh, I have 10 years of experience. And they said, do you have 10 years ex- of experience or do you have one year of experience that you've repeated over nine times? And mm-hmm. it just like, just cause I hear a drummer say I've been playing for 20 years, doesn't mean that they've been improving for 20 years, right? Mm-hmm. Like, but, and the fact that you got somewhere in nine months that you couldn't get in 22 years is incredible to me. Like there was mm-hmm. like, there had to be a code that you cracked that you couldn't crack, you couldn't seem to figure out what it was before, but for some reason, this time, you were like, I'm gonna just do this and see what happens, and it just cracked the code for everything. And so, mm-hmm. I, I'm curious, before, before you started doing this, when you were practicing, what were you doing before? Were you just playing the music? Were you just like trying to practice getting better at everything at the same time? Or like, what was, what was, what was going on before? Okay, so, Prior to, you know, meeting you guys and doing the first podcast, Mm -hmm. um, my regular routine for playing drums was I had a practice kit here at the house, Mm -hmm. which is all low volume stuff that I could use to, you know, to to kind of um, tide me over until I could get to a big loud kit that I could play as, you know, as much, you know, as loud as I wanted and, you know, make content with my cell phone or whatever. But um, prior to that, my regular routine was I'd be at work with headphones on listening to music because my job allows for that. I'd hear a song and I would think of it. Oh, I want to try this when I play, when I get home. Mm -hmm. So I'd think about that all day. I'd go home, I'd play it. I'd do it two or three times. Um, and I'd be done with it. Yeah. Um, now keep in mind too, at those times I was, I was a part of two bands. Now I am with nobody. Right. So uh, much of my drum attention that I had throughout the week, my bandwidth, so to speak, was being given to practicing songs that I already knew. And then using that same side of my brain to kind of plan shows and work with the musicians that I was playing with. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was kind of all of my attention I was, I was giving to things I already knew how to do, yeah. things I was already you know familiar with. Correct. Um, the push into... Um, doing doubles, you know, as kind of like a starting point to just improve overall happened completely by accident. Mm -hmm. Like I said, my understanding was that the learning was a ladder and that each each rung of the ladder was, oh, I can do doubles faster, faster, faster. Mm. Um, So my routine now Mm -hmm. um, is much more um, structured. 
I come, I come to the kit with a plan and I have to make a mindful decision come to on. not play the stuff that I want to play mm -hmm. at the time that I want to play it. Right. I have to give, I have to give something up first, mm -hmm. whether it's 20 minutes of doubles or if I am, you know, like working on independence or something, I have to do something functional before I have, before I can do something musical. And that's the way that it works for me. Got you. So like, keep in mind, like I come, you know, we went over this on the first podcast. I come from the punk rock world. So right, right. Bl blazing fast singles. I had great singles, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I wasn't understanding why am I not a fast drummer <laughs> when I can play fast beats and I can play fast singles. Right. That's because that's what I dedicated all of my time to. Right. Uh, you went in. You when went I started. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, please. No, I'm just saying you went, you went in, you went deep in that area. It, it mm -hmm. seems the part to me that's really sticking out. <clears throat> is the 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 fact that you got to a point where you structured your practice session you took mm -hmm. control of where you were and you realized that because apparently at the beginning you thought it was just about speed you thought it was going to be like oh i'm going to learn these doubles and i'm going to just get faster and i'm going to just get faster but mm -hmm. the, the results are residual and they are exponential when you begin to focus on one specific thing to get better at because the truth is and I've, i believe i've said this on many other podcasts but it's worth mm -hmm. saying again you can't get better at everything at the same time however what you are working on will spill over into other mm -hmm. areas and i like the fact I, I don't know why this is making me so excited it's probably because <laughs> of, it's, it's probably because of some things that i've actually been thinking about because to me this is not just about you getting faster on the drums or you getting better on the drums it's about the philosophy of learning and and seeing growth because there's so many people who want things in life and it, but for us it's drums right we're a drum podcast and so we mm -hmm. want to get better we watch lessons and we wonder why we're stumped and we can't we, we we learn the pattern but for some reason it's been three years and we're not any better or we don't feel like we're any better than we were mm -hmm. and the one thing that no one is teaching online and i don't really and maybe somebody is but i think we've all talked about it but nobody's really going deep and it's how to practice how mm -hmm. to see results how to not just sit down and learn but we've been so busy and focused on just producing as many lessons as possible and every drum lesson website will say we have these many lessons including us mm -hmm. uh, and we have these many as if the quantity of information gets you physically there yeah. and and i'm not saying that we that there's not like it's not good to have a bunch of lessons but you decided to take one thing like i don't think i hope that our audience that is watching right now can actually get the gravity of that it's it's really deep to me that you took one thing and was able to go from a beginner to scratching the surface you say of finally mm -hmm. getting to intermediate that you've been trying to get to for 20 years yeah and that to me this is why i think that you and most people who are seriously trying to get better at the drums, even though I know you said that you were a hobbyist and I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> I know I respect that. Yeah. Like you, we even posted the clip. I thought it was an amazing clip and it was probably yeah. freeing for a lot of people who saw it. But here's the thing. As a hobbyist, you are taking your practice time more serious than people who say they're serious. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. just putting it out there. So yeah. with that being said, I think that people like you, although you don't feel like you're a teacher should at least document what you're because document what you're working on, how you're working on it and what is working for you. Because a lot of people don't know what is actually working. Mm -hmm. They just see lessons, but what is actually working? And that's why we did um, the shed camp group that we did. When we did the Facebook group. We mm -hmm. did that Facebook group because we wanted to see it through with some people like we had like when we did the first shed camp we opened it up to only 100 people we were selling it for like a hundred dollars too for the month and we sold out right and cool we sold out that's great financially or business wise or thinking of it as a company but there was no way for us to really know how those people did right if mm -hmm. they got the results and we know that we knew that they would get the results if they actually stuck with it for a period of time and wasn't worried about trying to get better at everything at the same time. And you're working on this because we knew that there's going to be 
residual like you think that you're just working on hand speed no this is finna get you to a place that you didn't know that you would get to working on this so 100 percent. so what we did was we did the facebook uh group and when we did the facebook group i think some people are sam was in the facebook group is there anybody else in here that was in the chat that's in the chat right now that was in the facebook group i don't know but they did the facebook group and when they did it we were in there with them i did it with them i was like vlogging it every day for 30 days and it was I had some good days and some days that looked like I shouldn't be the <laughs> the teacher but at the yeah. end of the day it was I we watched them improve and the one thing like there was one guy and I have the videos I have the videos this is why I'm so excited about it I don't know why well I do know why it's exciting when you actually get to see people crack that code as a teacher mm -hmm. when you are trying to crack the code and help the students see and then they crack that code oh my god right anyway yeah. So we have video of drummers who were like, man, I've been doing the camp. And the one thing like I, I've been practicing the hand speed, I've been trying to get, you know, making sure I'm getting faster. But I played at church this Sunday and it's been like two weeks since I played at since we started the camp. And the guys at the church are looking at me like, yo, I don't know what it is, but there's something that's way more solid about the way you're playing mm -hmm. today. It seems yeah. like you have a little more confidence in what you're doing today. And I'm literally sitting there like that to me is amazing. We marketed it as a hand speed camp because we know that people want to play fast. But mm -hmm. when you get in there and you actually do it, even though you think you're just working on hand speed, there's all these other skills are being acquired while during the, during the process. And it's showing mm -hmm. up in your playing in ways you didn't expect. And the fact that that happened to you is insane. So what I would like for you to do is tell me about, the specific workouts that you were doing for 20 minutes. I know they were doubles, uh, but like, what was it? Uh, well, so I've done a lot of them because this is, this is kind of a journey that's taken up the better part of a year that I've taken. Mm -hmm. But what I can say is that it strengthens everything and it also changed everything. Okay. So um, on the one hand, yes, uh, there's regular doubles. And I think that it is more beneficial to me to do uh, doubles at a attainable speed for a really, really long time than it is to do bursts of doubles as fast as you can for, mm -hmm. you know, like little explosive kind of things. Now, if, if you play explosive music, of course, that part is going to help you. Right. For me, I really wanted to kind of develop a better flow on the kit. Got you. I did. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to kind of learn the ways to tie all of these things that I know together that seem like islands, mm -hmm. but they're really not because right. it, you know, they're all made up of the same little building blocks. Everything. Um, but here's, what's crazy. And this was the fun part for me. And this was a real struggle for me is that since I started playing drums at 10 or nine or 10 years old, mm -hmm. um, the majority of my drumming at this point is as a child. Gotcha. And I had a childish view about it. And it mm -hmm. wasn't until very recently that I really stepped up and said, okay, if you're going to be about this, then be about it. Mm -hmm. And that's when I kind of like really dug in and practiced yeah. better. Yeah. I was good before mm -hmm. I was good in my genre before now I'm much more well-rounded, but so here's a perfect example. I, for whatever reason was always a Vic Firth rock guy i used the vic firth drumstick rock size mm -hmm. because it was big it was loud it was heavy because i was playing like through cymbals and through, <laughs> the, through the snare drum right 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 because because i didn't have control in my hands everything that i listened to was loud and angry and that's how i came to the drums right, right. so that informed so many decisions after the fact down line so Obviously, I need a big bad stick that's going to be able to put up with the beating that I put through it. Yeah. And I need I need symbols that are going to be able to like handle the beating that I'm going to put on them. Right? right. And the same thing goes for drums. So I'm playing with super heavy rock like uh, Z custom symbols yeah. and I'm playing with double ply coated heads that are super thick and dead sounding. Yep. Um, and I'm playing with a big you know, heavy stick and playing super hard. Mm -hmm. When I really got in and decided to do the work about like playing drums better, each one of those decisions changed on its own. So mm -hmm. all of a sudden I'm doing these crazy workouts with doubles and I need a stick that's not so heavy. Right. So, so the practice informed that change. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden I'm playing, 
I'm like experimenting with different sticks to figure out what feels the best. Right. Uh, and then, and then the same thing with drums, I don't need, you know, a leather drum head that I can hit as hard <laughs> <laughs> that I can hit as hard as I want. Right. <laughs> um, a leather drum head. That is good. Yeah. And I don't, and I don't need like, half inch thick Z custom symbols that only sound good when you hit them hard. Right. Right. Kind they of a deal. Right? I'm not going to lie. They sound a mess when, you, <laughs> when yeah. you don't. Right. And now, and now I'm using everything that I use because I've learned like how I've learned some control of my hands right. um, through experimentation. All of those decisions were arbitrary mm -hmm. and doing the work actually gave me a much better insight to the just the simple tools that I was using. Yeah. So so deciding to do the work just changed literally literally everything. I learned that certain things were hurting me, so I had to sit up straighter wow. and bring my chair down or up a level wow. because I was spending much more mindful time at the yeah. kit. Yeah. And uh, you know, and it's not just about changing your gear. It's like once I started playing more and really understanding how my body interacts with drums and with sticks and with cymbals and mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. and really putting in the time and figuring out what side of my body gets tired first, which one's lagging, which one. Right. It all it all came from the playing. The playing informed those decisions, whereas before um, those decisions were made for me out of arbitrary kind of logic that i was using when i came to the drum set i needed stuff that i could hit hard yeah because that was all i did was hit hard right so and and that's not the case no more right so when you when you started practicing and how long did you stay at a certain tempo before you went up or did you not go up in tempo but just change the exercise like how did you decide uh, you know when to uh, switch exercises or when whether to go up or not well um, I think I think that's the tricky question that we all have to come to know ourselves mm -hmm. to answer. Um, there are times, you know, um, where it was I would just work at the, you know, work the exercise at the, the speed that it was presented to me mm -hmm. just for the simple benefit of hanging in there, deciding to do something that I don't want to do right. for as long as I can and as best as I can. Yeah. Um, whereas in another concept, if I'm learning like a groove, um, and the groove is played at a specific speed, mm -hmm. I would have to break it out, obviously bring the tempo down so right. I could understand how of to course. frame everything together and get the notes in the right spot. Yes. Um, so it really, it, it really all depends on, on, I think what a person is, is trying to learn yeah. the way that I learn the way that I learn drums, whether it's a pattern or a fill, or if I'm trying to solo or something, mm -hmm. is I have to frame it up first and understand where do the notes land. Right. That's the very first thing for me. And then once I have that, I can start to like kind of do, do the mixing board thing and bring the tempos, or not the tempos, but the each, each um, instrument on the drum in the kick drum, the, the dynamics, snare, yeah, yeah and, and really start to dial it in. But the, but for me, the framing has to come first, and that's learning where the notes are meant to be played. Right. Um, you know, because you can play, you can play a groove with everything is the loudest note that you can play, and it'll sound all right, but it's not going to have that kind it's of. It's not going to breathe. It's, it's not going to have that that yeah that vibe underneath it. Yeah, dynamics is everything. Like that's when I say dynamics. Some people when uh mm -hmm. when they hear the word dynamic, at least when I was coming up, let me just say that the way I was coming up, whenever they mm -hmm. say dynamics, is because they want you to play quiet, but dynamics is literally just how loud or how quiet. And right so it's a range it's a range and so if you can have uh that's what makes a groove with ghost notes sound good it's because the ghost notes are quiet the accented snare hit is not mm -hmm. and that makes it work because there's contrast and it's crazy because like i've been um i've been it's i've been studying video a little bit right like how to make videos better lighting and how it works and how you don't necessarily need uh, it shows, bro. Your stuff is getting really clean. <laughs> like the 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 last, yeah. I, I trust me, it's gonna get a lot better. I've been learning a lot in the last month, and one of the things that I've learned, it's crazy how music is so relatable to everything else. Like you don't necessarily need an insane. You don't need a five thousand dollar camera to make really great looking videos. You don't need a two thousand dollar camera to make really great looking videos. If you know the principles of how to make videos look nice, then you can apply yeah. it to whatever camera you have and you have a better video than you did if you had a $5,000 camera or a $10,000 camera, but you don't know anything about how to make videos look right. That's mm -hmm. why someone who can play the drums well can take a 
$100 first act kit and make it sound amazing versus mm-hmm. someone who can who cannot play at all and they're on a $10,000 drum kit it's still going to sound right. terrible. Uh mm-hmm. so it's that that type of thing but I'm wondering from the time you started the doubles in the way that you said that you practiced with the 20 minutes I know that your endurance is high uh and the, and I'm and I think it's cool it's, this conversation is inspiring me to even go back to practicing doubles again because well, although mm-hmm. I can play doubles the, my doubles in my left hand are just not the same as my doubles in my right hand. Now I could play doubles mm-hmm. in my left hand but they're not the same, right? And yes. I and I see tons of players whose left hand can do what their right hand does the same. And it's an amazing thing, yeah. the freedom that that opens up for you to then be able to express yourself in a way that you, because you have the freedom and your left hand will obey you. But, um, which is uh, the reason why we do these technical practices to get this technical aspect down so that we can use it mm-hmm. creatively and artistically. But I am wondering, the question is, did you, uh, notice any speed gains as well um no okay. i think i think well again i th- this th- the doubles journey for lack of a better word that i've taken started in one place and it's branched off in many different places mm-hmm. um so on the one hand there was a time for me to practice the doubles and then bring up the speed because there was an application that requ- that called for it mm-hmm. i think my benefit that I got out of it was that I was learning where doubles exist in my regular playing anyway, and just kind of overall Mm -hmm. had a cleaner, tighter sound. Um, It's also led me to a lot of like um, stickings that I never would have even thought of. So like, for (laughs) example, like because, because I come from punk rock, everything is straightforward, right? Mm -hmm. Four, four time, 16th notes on the grid very easy to understand um the placement of everything what makes it difficult is how fast it's cranked up Mm -hmm. um whereas so because i come from that i didn't have a very good um understanding and i was quite resistant to trying to understand odd numbers got you like threes five sevens and nines and all that and my 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 journey with doubles has taken me to new stickings that are odd numbers but are still doubles gotcha. it starts with the one and then it's doubles until the end of the sticking type thing right 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 yeah um because that it, stuff had to be that right. stuff had to be shown shown to me yeah and it's just um i thought that if i could you know because i could have just as easily decided okay i'm going to do this journey with paradiddles mm-hmm. right um mm-hmm. and i don't think it and and paradiddles are a little bit more complex of a sticking mm-hmm. than doubles um I mean, but it's, yeah, I think it's just a it's it, just a, a combination of singles and doubles, like every other if, rudiment. Exactly, but if I t- if I took this journey with paradiddles, I don't think I would have gotten as far. Hmm. And why do you think that? What do you think? Um, what do you think would have been different? Because the doubles journey that I took was specifically to fill in gaps. Got you. That that I already had because I was really great at certain things. Mm-hmm very specific things that <laughs> only really <laughs> I and people like me like. Um, but it was more about building. It was really about going back to the bottom and building a stronger foundation for everything. Absolutely. And I, I, I couldn't agree. Like I'm, I'm inspired by the conversation about the things you're saying to do some more of that myself, because sometimes yeah. we get so caught up into the craziest things that are happening that we see on the drum kit, not understanding that literally there's only singles, doubles, flams Mm -hmm. and everything else is a combination of those Mm -hmm. i mean you got you got you got the 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 triple stroke roll i guess you can call it if you're doing three hits with one hand but typically at the end of the day you have your single strokes your double strokes your flams and Mm -hmm. everything else is a combination of those so if we start talking about the six stroke roll what we're talking about is doubles and singles combined if we're talking about a five stroke roll it's doubles and singles combined if we're talking mm-hmm. about uh, any of the nine stroke roll, a nine stroke roll is literally like doubles until you get to nine and you hit one and crack. Like it's, it's single yeah. strokes and double strokes combined. So I, I think that if there is anything that you would want to be able to, uh, to uh, do a foundational check on, it's on your single strokes and double strokes and double strokes mm-hmm. seems to be one of the things that a lot of drummers uh, struggle with. And yeah. It's, and it's, it's, you do it to get the freedom. 
you do it because mm-hmm. like I'm on this whole kick of like, why? Why am I doing this? Why do I do this? What part of this is helping me get to my goal? Right. And so mm-hmm. any the whenever anybody asks me like, dang, why do you want to talk about practice so much? It's, it's to, to me, it's still always about art. Everything to me right now is about art, creativity. Like I'm on this whole my whole culture in life is creativity is creating different things, whether it's this podcast, right. the app, the music that I'm writing, uh, if I'm doing videos, if I started a t-shirt company at some point, like it's always going to be about something creative. Right. Yeah. But like the reason why we practice the drums, the reason why we practice any instrument is so that we can use the tools that we've, uh, that we've, we can use the tools that we've learned to communicate what we're trying to communicate creatively. That's all it mm-hmm. is. And if you can't do double strokes, then you're going to have a hard time getting your point across. It's like if a person can't pronounce their T's or yeah. they have a hard time pronouncing their R's, you may have something to say, but it's going to have trouble getting it out. That's the point. Right. And yeah. so if uh, I, I really like it, I think it's I think it's amazing. I think you should document. And even if you don't go online and start documenting, we're going to still have you on the podcast so you can update us on your journey, because I feel like conversations like this and hearing what's working for people who are trying things out is inspiring for other people to go and try some of those things out because Mm -hmm. every like for you right now you're not practicing speed you're practicing efficiency and how you can use these double strokes and you can still sound raw without being super fast like there's more than speed that makes a drummer good right yeah and so if you can learn from the experiences of other people's journeys and use it pieces of it to get to where you're trying to go why not and so that's how i yeah. see it and that's why i really love how you've you know what you've been how you got here and, and you sharing the story so i have a question now sure so you've been doing this for nine months right ish yes. it's been taking you on this roller coaster you've it's, it's been impacting your playing what's your what's the plan now like what do you see going forward with it you are you planning on still staying with doubles are you looking at yes. breaking out into some other okay so tell me about I, how you see I, it going I, I mean, it's, it's going to go how it goes. Um, I, I think it would be a huge disservice to understand how far I've come just in nine months of, of really digging into doubles mm-hmm. um, to say now that I got it and then move on to something else. I think it would be disrespectful to the double. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and frankly, I'm, I'm, I'm not ready yet. It, gotcha. the, just, just, just that studying that little piece uh, with some help because you know I used to I used to take lessons from Devin Sumner at the music. Oh lab. yeah, yeah, yeah! Shout out to Devin. We had him on the podcast too. We got to have him back. Yeah. Um, and you know I, I stopped taking lessons at the music lab when all the COVID stuff um, right. went off. Yeah. Um, but it it has it introduced me to so many things that I've just barely scratched the surface of. It's and nice. I'm really in 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 this particular point in my life because I've done. I've done the live drummer thing. I've done the, you know, playing shows multiple times a week mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I've tried to do the fully on my own Instagram drummer thing where I just make videos and hope people like them and watch them and follow me type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me at, right now, I'm just about the notes. Um, yeah. I don't, I'm not trying to sell anything yet. And I use the word sell loosely because I don't, I don't sell anything in life, but I'm just saying like, <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm in kind of a, it's like you're in a hibernation. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I'm in kind of a co- cocoon right now trying to understand, um, how arrogantly I went about learning this instrument. Wow. That from is, early that on. Is, that is a, that is a hell of a way to put it. That, I, yeah. I, wow. Okay. I like it. And I mean, and make, make no mistake. I was afforded every advantage about it mm-hmm. from early on. I learned how to play. Uh, I learned how to read music in fifth grade with a teacher, mm-hmm. you know, with 11 other drummers, yeah. you know, j- just a snare drum kit, you know, Wait a minute, did, you go to, did you go to school out here? Yeah. In Sacramento? No, no, no. I went to a, I went, I went to elementary school uh, in a town called Lathrop. It's about, I it's know about exactly where Lathrop is. Yeah, that's where I went to elementary school. Uh, the reason why I was asking, I actually got in a bad car accident in Lathrop, flipped off the uh, side of the freeway. There's a, uh-huh. a AM PM right off the freeway on one of the exits in Lathrop, and that's where yeah. I have a scar on my arm from it. But anyway, I know exactly yeah. where Lathrop is because the reason why I asked that was because I'm like, yo, we didn't have like a drum teacher in elementary mm-hmm. school. Like you guys had drum teachers. That's what's up. No, no, we okay. So my I, I started band 
school band in fifth grade. You and guys that was had the school last... band in fifth grade? We yes. <laughs> we didn't go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, and my year was the last year that they allowed people to sign up to play the snare drum in in like the the school concert band. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because because there was eleven of us. Right, right, right. I mean, there was more drummers than there was anybody, and to Sounds and like church. To, right, <laughs> and to <laughs> and to hear and to hear a row of eleven, nine, and ten year olds like try to hammer out eighth notes. Yeah, it was well, just, yeah, it was, oh it, it, yeah, it was not a musical experience for anybody. But right. it, I I stuck with it, and um, I was allowed to play through. You know, all I played all, in school bands all the way through high school, and then I played a marching snare drum in the um, you know in the Air Force when I was a part of the Air Force Band. Mm-hmm. Um, not the big main, like, United States Air Force Band, but every base has a band for musical, you know, f- when they need someone to play the national anthem or something. There's just, there's people on standby to do that sort of thing. Right, some of them are uh, really good, though, too. Amazing, yeah. Um, but all that time, I wasn't paying attention. I was, you know, I was like, I got this. You know, I, 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 I've i been playing since I was 10. I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. absolutely the the worst attitude i could right. have possibly had about it right. um, and it didn't you know and i wasn't a grown man until i decided to like look if you're going to be about this then be about it yep uh and all the other stuff started falling off the bands that i was a part of you know started falling off mm-hmm. because they weren't um they were fun and i got to play music with great people yeah. um and i won't and I'll, and I'll never speak a harsh word about um you know the people that i used to play music with right but um it wasn't serving me as um a practitioner of this craft right Trying and to that's where i'm at right now and 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 you call yourself a hobbyist no nah. well listen i i feel like it almost sounds like you were a hobbyist before you stopped playing in your bands <laughs> and now you're actually taking this serious that's what it seems more like to me but uh, yeah. I, I really love it, man. And I, I love the perspective. I love the journey of it. I love the, the realizations. I'm hoping. That yeah. I'm- and I feel better as a man walking around like in life. Yeah. Knowing that, that I took the time to really wrap my head around something. Yeah. And really give it the time that it deserves. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've done and, and I mean, part of it, part of it is coming from, you know, repetition yep. and, and thoughtful, um, you know, making a decision to stay in one place and do a boring thing as best as you can for as long as you can. And then there's times where, uh, it's appropriate to push it yeah, and to, and to try and break it into something new. Yeah. Um, and I'm still learning where that line is every day. It sounds um, like you, it sounds like you threw some discipline in there, man. And it, and it has, it has paid off. I've, the one thing that I've mm-hmm. learned coming up is if you are a person that doesn't have a lot of self-confidence or you want some more confidence do something really hard all Mm -hmm. the time and whether that is running whether that is practicing your drums and actually being disciplined because you become a person that you you begin to look at yourself as a person that you weren't before so yeah that's what ends up happening but at the end of the day uh that's amazing i'm gonna get to some of these comments because it it seems like the people's been chatting it up a little bit in the comments yeah, yeah. Um, see what they're. And, uh, go ahead. Did we did, did we let them know about the subscription? Oh, we should listen. Because, go ahead. Because Joe Joey's on here, man. He hopped on and was like, "I want to do something for the people who watch you guys on the live," and uh, it's real simple. He's giving away six months. He's gonna pay for six months of Drum Tracks app subscriptions. You get access to everything on the app, which means, of course, you can stream the tracks already, but you can stream offline. You can. Uh, watch all the video lessons that are on the app. We're adding some new stuff coming up soon. You can download for free five tracks a month to uh, do drum covers with, to, to do whatever you want, like, you know, with those mm-hmm. tracks. And, uh, yeah, the only thing you have to do to get that six months is you have to, the first person, the first one of you, <laughs> to DM Joey on Instagram, you win. That's it. And his his yep. uh, his IG is already on the screen. You're looking at it. Yeah, it's really simple. First name Joseph, first name Joseph, middle initial I, last name Chin, all one word. First DM, um, I'm gonna fit you up with six months of the Drum Tracks app. Yeah, paid. It's all it's 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 all there. You see it, and then so he'll hook you up after you after you. This is how to work. After you DM him, he'll let me know. I'll contact mm-hmm. you. We'll get you your membership. Simple as that. Yep. Simple as that. So uh, let's get through the uh, comments real quick. Yeah. 
Uh, Adrian hurt this music. We had him on a podcast not too long ago. He says, what's good? Where are sticks? He quit. He's always been telling everybody yeah. else to quit drums. He finally quit on plan. He had somewhere mm-hmm. to be today. He couldn't make it to the podcast. Something came up. And so we were able to still uh, go on without him. He'll be back next week, though. German boy, 1993. He said, okay, well, in that case, turn up. Happy. Listen, okay. Sticks is not here. <laughs> We are not going to – it is not New Year's. It is the middle of – well, not the middle, but it is the beginning of June, which is the middle of the year. Uh, He said in – what else did he say here? I got to get closer. He said, I'm going to need you to read that with Styx's enthusiasm. (laughs) 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 Oh, my goodness. You guys are killing me. Uh, Sam says, I am a witness to the power of working – your doubles properly. Good stuff, Joe. We got Jay Sill, Moash. Shout out to you, Jay Sill. He was on the podcast not too long ago, too. Uh, he was uh, definitely agreeing with you, talking about facts. Sam says it always spills over. He's talking about the uh, when you're working on one thing, and then it, uh, it, yeah, it spills over to other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jay Sill says, I did the same thing with doubles. He said, I did the same thing with doubles as well during the Rona period. Focused on it, and man, the results. It works when you focus. It's quiet. You're not going to get any help. I almost got up and ran around this church. Uh, (laughs) I mean, I'm I'm in my studio room at the house, but still, you know. Yeah. I did the – Sam said he did the same thing with paradiddles. He said it's a whole new ball game now. Listen, I don't know. I I honestly – because I think the principle, Joe, is that, like, if you just focus in on something, right, whatever Mm -hmm. it is – but when, especially when it's something foundational as, you know, a single stroke or a double stroke or even a paradiddle or whatever it is you're focusing on, that's pretty foundational. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be interested when you start putting doubles, orchestrating them around the kit, not just with your hands, but like mm-hmm. with your hands and your feet, like, you know, right yeah. hand, right foot, left foot, left hand, you know, in different combinations therein, it could probably get pretty, pretty interesting. Um, yeah. Sam says he's still going as well. Uh, Jay Seal says that what, what tempo are you at now? He was talking to Sam in that question. Yeah. Oh, they had a whole little conversation. He says his best right. is at 110. <laughs> He's trying to get to 130, doing it straight, but he also found out that he can switch the accents to go higher in tempo. Okay. But he want to yeah, play that like... was th- Go ahead. That was, an, that was another part that I, that I uh, completely eluded me for so long was that, you know, uh, there, there's four positions in right, right, left, left. Yeah, that are available for accent. Correct. Uh, and it and that does not have to start on a bar line or on a quarter note. It, you, it can it can can be anywhere. Yeah. Have you displaced them yet? Have I displaced them? Yeah. Like where where you're because you said you're saying that they could be anywhere. So instead of starting on the one, you start on you do them in eighth notes and you start on the end of one. Right. Yes. All right. And yes, then, I have. Have you inverted them? Yes. Where instead of going Inver- right, instead of going right, right, yeah. left, left, you go right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. That type of thing. It's, and then yeah. I switch. And then I and then I switch leads. Left hand lead. Yeah. Same thing. Left, right, right, left, left, right, right. That whole thing. Yeah. It, I don't know. It's still it, after a while it'll turn into. But where it depends on where you're accenting though, where you place the mm-hmm. accents, it gets really insane because your brain will start to trick you because you're hearing the downbeat in different places. Then mm-hmm. where the, the do you do this with a metronome too, or do you do it without a metronome? Um, sometimes I'll do it to a track. I'll Got pick you. a track that's that's Got about a, because because I enjoy it more. Of course, it makes a lot of and, sense. And, and anything, and, and if that's if that's five more minutes that I sit there doing it, then so be it. Gotcha. The toll the toll has to be paid. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> got you. You got to get the reps in. You're not going to get across yeah. unless you pay it. It's it's facts. It's facts. Just, yeah. that's going on Instagram too just so you know the toll okay. has to, the okay. toll has to be paid uh, yeah. Joseph Matthews says Detroit is in the building of lockdown <laughs> yeah. shout out to you uh, Jay Seal, welcome Jay Seal, that part Jay Seal says my best for paradiddles is 135 played as, as straight wait let me get a little closer to the screen um Play that straight. I want to push it as well with my doubles. Uh, and he said his doubles are up to 200 BPM. That's pretty fast. That's pretty. F- but as eighth notes, sixteenth notes, which which subdivision? Because that matters. Uh, he says he realized the technique plays a big part. It does. But but when it comes to technique, though, guys, 
I think practicing for to get the technique down and make sure you're like you're you have the proper form or whatever the case is, whether you're trying to do, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, whatever tech, ha whatever hand technique you're trying to do, going slow helps. Yeah. And, and going slow and going often helps. And and mm -hmm. you'll get more endurance. Like I just started running. I, I mentioned it in the podcast. Uh, I did. Yeah. You said you, you said that uh, that you started. So today is my today was my 13th day in a row. And, uh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. And so the way that I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to do 100 days in a row. That's my goal. Right. With just running. And that's you know, I get up in the morning. I go to the there's a middle school not too far. And it's it's interesting that this middle school has a football field because middle schools didn't have football fields when I was coming up. But they have. What did your schools have? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you didn't have band. No, you didn't have football? we in elementary did school. In elementary school. In elementary school, bro, yeah. we did not have band. We had a music yeah. teacher who would come and just all he would do was have us sing songs, and he would come like once every other month. Like that's yeah. what it was. And so music we, class. We right, but we didn't have no real music program. Period. I didn't know about the reason why I knew about music is because I went to church, and that's where all the music was happening. But at school, no music was happening. Then when I was in seventh grade, when I got to junior high, we had band. And so that's when I yeah. learned what a clarinet was and what oh. all, all. Yeah. Like I didn't know that in elementary school. And so yeah. I played drums. I actually started off playing saxophone in band, but I also played a uh, snare drum in band in seventh yeah. and eighth grade as well. I mean, but it, the patterns were whack, but, you know, whatever. We were in there. Ta, yeah. Ta, da, 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 da. Like, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I guess. But but at the same time, I'm going to church, and so that's why that was boring. But um, in high school, I didn't do band. Or I didn't do I didn't do drum line because I was playing football, and so oh, okay. same time, right? After, yeah. Because the drum line was together after school while we were at practice, and it just it didn't. Yeah. Work. But uh, yeah, um, priorities. That part. <clears throat> I did do jazz band though my junior year in high school. I did. I did. Yeah. I did. I, I did too. But I only did it for that. I did it for one semester because our jazz band was so boring. I don't know. I don't know what it was. My school music experience was always boring. It was church. That was that was live. That's what that was. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah. So I started running, and the fact that I've been running, what I've noticed is because I haven't run in a long time. Like yeah. I haven't. I haven't consistently ran probably for ten plus years. And the fact that I'm doing this, the first day was really hard. I can't run a mile without stopping yet. Yeah. But the first day I could only, I had to push really hard to get through the first lap without stopping. Cause I'm at a track that goes around mm -hmm. a football field. And, oh, okay. and so I ran the first lap and then the rest of it, I had to like jog the straightaways and walk the corners like you learn in high school. Right. And, yeah, okay. and, but by the end of that week, I was able to run two laps without stopping. Yeah. Today I ran three laps without stopping. And so the way that I'm doing it just on the, and I know this has, it's, it's going to relate, but the way that I'm doing it is I, the first week I'm just going to run one lap without stopping. I'll jog the corners and walk the straightaways. The second week I'm going to jog. I'm forcing myself to do two laps without mm -hmm. stopping, walking the corners and jogging the straightaways on the other. Plus I add a fifth lap because I'm trying to get to three miles. I know it's like a real lofty goal, but I'm giving myself a hundred days. So yeah, I am the third week, which is starting tomorrow, is going to be I have to run three laps without stopping. And, yeah. then, my, <laughs> and then the next three laps after that, I will walk uh, the corners and jog the straights. And then at mm -hmm. the end of by, I'm, I'm sure in the middle of next week, towards the end of next of this next week's, I'm going to be running the full mile and walking four laps because uh, next week I have to run four laps without stopping. <laughs> And yeah. walk and uh, walk the corners and jog the straights on another mile. And so by the end of the three months, I should be I'm hoping to be able to run. But it's because of the consistency of doing it. And the point is, it gets easier. It doesn't get mm -hmm. harder. It gets mm -hmm. the hardest part is the beginning. If you can push through the monotony of the beginning because you keep the 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 goal in front of your mind, it gets easier. And yeah. so that's one of the things that I've been noticing, like even after today's run. And I pushed myself today because I wanted to try to get a slightly faster time because I don't want to run a 15 minute mile. I, I want to be able to do it in 10 minutes or under. I'm a pretty big guy, though. I'm like two. Uh, I'm six, three right now, like two ninety five. Right. Mm -hmm. 
And so my goal is like, oh, I just want to get down to 270 pounds first, then get down to 250. And so I'm going to run. I'm not lifting weights right now because the gyms aren't open. And COVID-19 yeah. had me put on 20 pounds. And so <laughs> yeah. I'm going to run because I know that it's good for my heart and it's going to help me get to my goal. And mm -hmm. uh, it gets easier over time. And so for me to be able to run a mile in 10 minutes, like today I ran the mile in uh the first time i ran it was like 15 minutes today i ran yeah. the mile in literally under 12 minutes and i was like oh mm -hmm. just in 13 days yeah if you actually do the work and so at, right. the, at the end of the day when you take that whole analogy and you bring it over to drums no matter what you're working on if you do it consistently and you put in the work it's going to be hard up, up front but it gets easier as you go along especially mm -hmm. with the basic stuff that's why i'm like back yeah. to back to running because i'm sure it's going to help me do other things. Yeah. There's a residual, you know, breakdown. But let me get back to these comments. Yeah, sure. We got a, um, Blake the Great. He says, yo, sorry I'm late, but what's good? <laughs> Listen, fam, we just glad to have you. Even though you're late. That's unacceptable. <laughs> he said it's unacceptable. <laughs> like he just got in like 20 minutes ago, 10 minutes ago. Uh, yep. Jay Seal says he's aspiring to hear someone give so much focus into a hobby that's that's what i'm saying like i'm like he's putting more focus into this than people who claim okay i'm not gonna keep saying it yeah i belabor the plan but it's it's pretty good but i think it's a yeah. psychological thing to say to yourself mm -hmm. yeah i'm just a hobbyist because it takes the pressure off and you're actually like having fun and even though some of the parts is not super fun like i gotta do this even though i don't want to do this because you just you know have that type of uh uh self-determination I don't know. I feel like when you say that you're not a professional, it can just take some of the pressure off, though, where it's like, mm -hmm. if I'm not the greatest, you don't feel pressure to be the greatest. You're actually OK in the process of getting better. That's what yeah. I think it is. All right. So the last comment is by Jay Seal. He says creating shuffle grooves with double strokes is also a great challenge. Watched Juan Carlito teach it. Now, Juan Carlos is he's a he's something special. We got to admit. Yeah, he's that. an alien. He is something special. Yeah. The drums. He there's. I don't know if uh, if there's any other drummer that I've seen. Well, there's other drummers, but not many other drummers that you see that plays with the amount of independence that he does, and he does it so clean. It's just like, mm -hmm. bro, Jesus Christ! Like, yeah, <laughs> how that and the way he does it. I don't know. And he's and he's just such a great dude. Uh, He's he's yeah. been a great dude, and he he's yeah. So if you if you can learn from Juan Carlos, please do. It's amazing. He's he's dope. Period. I that, that it, it's relate. It's not about Juan Carlito, but it is related. Is that you know because I am uh you know like a white punk rocker kid, <laughs> um I I completely disregarded Latin music. Yeah. You know because I didn't I didn't listen to it. It's not that I you know hated it or anything, but it was just it was not music that reached my world. Yeah. Um, and it didn't and it didn't really reach my world until I brought it, you know, to the kit because I wanted independence. Yeah. I wanted to understand why I can't make two things happen at, you know, at the same time. And um, Latin was the first thing that I was taught to break that. Yeah. Um, and and he is he murders it. Juan Carlos murders it. And you can see the application from that type of independence and the rhythmic mm -hmm. sensibilities that come from where his background is that contributes to uh, everything else that he plays even when he's mm -hmm. playing other straight grooves he has such control you see what i'm saying because mm -hmm. of yeah everything else that he learns it's that spillover we were talking about before and so yeah that's it's, it's fire we got sam with he dropped the last comment just now he says i'm finding that in the midst my god on today in the midst of recording drums for projects i'm finding improvements and confidence in my playing and that's what happens when you do the work guys it's, it's plain and simple yeah so listen, man, Joe, we thank you again for uh, coming on the podcast today. We're thank gonna, you. We're going to have you again as you continue to experiment and explore with some of the stuff. Um, if you're not yeah. already recording yourself, bro, you should just turn your phone on when you're doing some of your practice stuff. Even if you don't post it, just for yourself. Turn yeah. it on and, and so you can always go back and look back and see what you were working on and, s and you'll be able to see it. I don't, and I, I secretly want to see it too. I'm not going to lie. So Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, man, thanks for coming on to the podcast. We'll do this again. Remember, Joe's, uh, he's he's giving away a six-month Drum Tracks app membership. If you haven't DM'd him, go to his DM uh, the on Instagram. His IG is on the screen. You can see it. Joseph I. Yep. Chin. It's there. So, all right, fam. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. All right. Thank you. Good luck.